I'm at the EHA uh, 2018 meeting, uh, speaking uh, for the AML Global Portal. Uh, today I'll be talking about the immune-based uh, therapies in acute myeloid leukemia. This is a major emerging uh, area of research, and this really includes two different therapeutic approaches. One of them is using antibody drug conjugates. So these are basically monoclonal antibodies that have loaded toxins on them that are targeted towards leukemia cells. One of these, a drug called gemtuzumab ozogomycin, has actually been approved in the United States and also now in Europe to be used in patients with CD33 positive acute leukemia. And uh, this is something we are using very frequently in our patient population. The other group of immune-based therapies is one that I do a lot of research in, which is using T-cell therapies to uh, increase the acute leukemia uh, debulking. And uh, one of these approaches has been using immune checkpoint-based therapies. The other is with bispecific antibodies, and third is with vaccine. So a lot of the data that we have uh, presented at multiple national meetings uh, and also now is uh, published and under review is using a combination of azacitidine with a PD-1 inhibitor. And at MD Anderson, we have about 12 different trials running looking at different uh, combinations of azacitidine with either PD-1 inhibitor nivolumab or with uh, durvalumab uh, or with Pembro as well as with CTLA-4 inhibitor ipilimumab in both AML, MDS, pre-transplant, post-transplant, also double checkpoint inhibitors with azacitidine. The study that so far has been completed and uh, the data is out in the public domain is the combination of azacitidine and nivolumab, a PD-1 inhibitor in relapsed AML. What we saw is that with this combination, the overall response rates and the CRCRI rates were almost double of what we would expect with azacitidine or decitabine alone in the relapsed acute myeloid leukemia population. So this was quite encouraging. But what was more encouraging really was that the overall survival, especially when you look at the early salvage patients, such as salvage one AML patients, was almost 11 months, which is really something we have not seen in salvage one AML. We usually expect, and we've looked at this in our database as well as with other institutions, and there's recent data published, showing four to six months is the best expected median overall survival in salvage AML with azacitidine and recitabine alone. And we actually have some ideas why this is happening. We've looked at the T-cell content of the bone marrow and peripheral blood, and what we see is that the people in the early salvage have more T-cells, so they have a preserved immune population, and so it's easier to use immune therapies. Once you get to salvage three, four, or five and beyond, the T-cells are depleted, you have no immune cells to harness, and hence immunotherapy does not work. This has also been shown with bispecific antibodies and CAR T-cells and ALL, so it seems to be an emerging theme that when you use immune-based therapies, whether it's in AML or ALL, you really have to introduce them early when the immune system has not been completely shot down with multiple rounds of chemotherapy. So at this time, the next approaches are to consider doing biomarker-driven studies using baseline bone marrow T cells. Uh, and we do have cutoff numbers that we think could be very predictive and sensitive for response. And hopefully these will then get approved in a targeted approach, not for all patients, but for those patients who do have a good baseline immune profile and could have a very significant and benefit and survival, even in relapsed AML, which is a very unmet area of need today.